all carbs are equal, right? <laughs> I laugh only because to me, when you look at this platter, <laughs> you wouldn't guess by looking at it that these carb values are all the same. So what do I mean by that? So white jazz and rice, mixed pasta, gummy bears. All three of these are exactly 100 grams of carbs, meaning that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get 400 calories or 100 grams of carbs from each one of these. Wild, right? <laughs> now, let's talk about the measured values. So to measure 100 grams of carbs from rice, I needed that's 400 grams cooked. With the pasta, that's gonna be 135 grams raw measure. For the gummy bears, it's 144 grams. <laughs> So if you look at those in terms of food volume, this is the main reason I have, want to have it all laid out here is so many people like want to argue with me and say, Chris, like rice is the same as gummy bears and pasta and fruit. And yes, all, all of that's true. If you look at it solely based upon carbon values from the macro level, you're hundred percent right. If I had eight ounces of chicken in any of these three portions, I would still get hundred grams of carbs. I just don't believe they were created equal. <laughs> and here's why. If you are absolutely ravenous and your goal is to reduce body fat, you tell me, if I give you 100 grams of carbs, what is gonna keep you full longer? Just look at the volume here. My hand in comparison, how much rice? My hand, you can't even see it. So if I wanted to be full or satiated and not want to eat my arm off, I'm gonna choose that rice all day long. Now, on the flip side of that, let's say I'm in a calorie surplus and my stomach space is very, very limited, which is why a lot of times for younger guys or just anyone in general who's like what they'll consider you know, a hard gainer or someone who's naturally skinny, I'm gonna opt for pasta because the food volume is much smaller to get say 100 grams of carbs per meal. To as opposed to where I said, hey man, I need you to eat 400 grams of cooked rice. That's daunting if you had to do it four or five times a day, right? So if you're thinking about this logically, Chris, like which one do I want to pick for fat loss or muscle gaining or, you know, whatever. To me, the gummy bears are never going to be an option. <laughs> it's going to spike my blood sugar way north because it's just basically all sugar and corn syrup. And I get very little of it. So it's not going to do anything in my mind of putting on hard lean muscle tissue. And it's definitely not going to be very efficient at burning fat, right? So the gummy bears to me are never an option. If I want gummy bears, I'm gonna have them on my free meal, call it a day, I'm not counting carbs there. I'm just gonna smash a bunch of food, right? So to me, I'm completely removing the gummy bears from the equation. But I wanted to put it there so you could see as a whole, like, look, this is how little it can get away from you. You see this bag? <laughs> there are 31 servings of 22 grams of carbs in here. I use four and a half servings to get 100 grams. Technically 99 if I'm being brutally honest, but. 99 grams of carbs from gummy bears is 144 grams measured. It's four and a half servings. Look how easy that is. That's two freaking handfuls. I could smash that before the commercial break <laughs> of a TV show. And this plow through 100 grams of carbs. You think if I'm trying to lose body fat, that's going to be optimal? Heck no. Absolutely not. It's going to be really hard because I'm constantly spiking that blood sugar. Like, so let's say, for example, like Chris, I just had a few each day. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to grab, you know what? I'm going to do it out of the bag. Let's say I have this sitting on my desk and I'm doing and building client programs and I'm like, you know what? I'm ready for some gummy bears. That many. Down the hatch. If I repeated that every time I adjusted someone's meal plan, let's say that's every fourth update, I'm going to hammer this whole bag day and a half or quicker. Probably quicker. <laughs> Those can add up really quickly where on the flip side of that, I'm never going to sit down and eat a box of pasta or a whole bag of rice. <laughs> I'm just not. <laughs> and I love rice. But it's gonna take me a few days to get through a normal size bag of rice. And that's cooking it for me and my whole family. And you figure Daxon eats some, Angel eats some, when Ty's home, he definitely eats some. So it's one of those things like, you could plow that bag of gummy bears super quick. It's gonna take a lot longer to get through a whole box of pasta or a whole bag of rice. So, all right, back to the thing that I wanna talk about in nutrient density versus quantity versus quality. So to me, if you're looking for a nutrient dense food, meaning getting the most bang for your buck, the most carbs for the smallest yield, we're gonna choose this pasta. If you're looking to get the most of food volume per gram of carb, I'm gonna choose the rice all day long. So to kind of bring this back into a whole, what I wanna think about here, guys, is let's avoid the gummy bears. 
Stick with pasta and the all season for mass gaining if you can't get your food down. And then to me, the rice is always going to be a staple because I can always eat a ton of that. And then as my food comes down in calories, I still get a good portion. Like even if you look at say half of that, so 200 grams of rice, that's almost a cup and a half if you measured it through cups. So I'm still getting a good portion of rice with say eight ounces of meat and some vegetables. And I'm feeling very satisfied. So if you like this video, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Be mindful what goes into your mouth. Look at the food portions. Be very cognizant about choosing the food source that's going to best fit your plan. Present CV.